In a world where we live, there is water and the things that live in it. You've seen the fish, you've witnessed the shrimp, but now, this February, prepare to experience those little worms and bugs you see everywhere in your aquarium. Starring Bob Moss, this is Common Aquarium Microfauna. Subscribe to my channel. Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. How's it going, my Nano Tank lovers? Today I'm just going to be talking to you about the most common types of microfauna that we find in our aquariums, specifically in our shrimp tanks. The good, the bad, the ugly, what you should look out for, what you should get rid of, and what ones are beneficial. All right, let's get over to the computer and let's get into it. All right, I'm over at the computer. Hopefully this all works out. So first up on my list, I have nematodes. These are known as roundworms. Some species of this are parasitic and live off fish, often appearing in the anus of the fish. I think the most common type is called camelanus, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but this is a small reddish brown worm that infects the intestines of fish and can only be discovered when one or more of them protrude out of the fish's butt. But by far the majority of nematodes are harmless. Also in the uh, nematode category, you have vinegar eels. They are harmless and non-parasitic and many fish breeders breed these as live food for their fish fry. Next up, we have your common detritus worm. These are a type of segmented worm, the same phylum as earthworms actually. They look like thin, pointy, white-brown strings that wiggle through the water and between the pebbles. Detritus worms are detrivores, meaning that they only eat decomposing plant and animal waste material. They will not harm your fish. You usually do not see these worms. They live in the substrate, but they will occasionally come out for oxygen. If, if you're seeing many of them, feed less and clean your substrate more. Some other less common types of worms that we can see in our aquarium include flatworms or planaria. These are not as common as detritus worms, but they are much harder to remove. As I said, they are flatworms. You usually get them with new plants, especially if acquired from a local pond or a natural water source. If you've noticed these white worms, chemical treatment is required. You need like no planaria or finbendazole. Do not try to remove them manually unless you're using an actual planaria trap. If you accidentally squish or split one, it's capable of regenerating both halves and now you have two planaria. What makes these worms problematic is that they're both scavengers and carnivores. They won't harm healthy fish, but they love to feast on fish eggs, and of course, they'll hunt and prey on all sizes of shrimp, from our babies to our adults. Next, there are anchor worms. Anchor worms aren't actually worms at all, but they do look like them. Anchor worms are actually a type of copepod, I'll mention them soon, and they're a dangerous parasite that can cause a lot of harm to fish. They can be seen by the naked eye, and they're commonly found on koi and goldfish, but can be found on many freshwater fish species. The worm part extending out into the water is actually the female reproductive structure. Treating these parasites can be challenging depending on your setup. I'm not the best person to ask about this. I'm just telling you what they are. Finally, on my worm list are the phylum I mentioned earlier, which are annelids or sometimes called white worms. So besides detritus worms, these would usually be added manually. It's rare to see them in the aquarium. Most of the common worms people are familiar with are the members of the annelid group, you know, earthworms and leeches for example. Leeches are another problematic group with the annelids. They'll attach themselves to the side of fish and shrimp or to the inside of their mouths or to their gills where they secrete a blood thinner and they can significantly affect the fish and shrimp health. So I'm done with the gross worms now, on to some more useful species of microfauna. Next up we have ostracods. These are more commonly known as seed shrimp. They live on organic detritus and algae. Seed shrimp actually form part of the food chain for other invertebrates and juvenile fish. In actual fact, seed shrimp are a benefit to your aquarium because of their small size and eating habits. They are one of nature's best cleanup crews for shrimp keepers. Many people encourage them to thrive in their tanks in the true belief that they're an indicator that the tank and water parameters are healthy. I am one of these people. I think seed shrimps are a good sign that your water is ready and your tank is, is matured enough for baby shrimp. They're also really useful for fish breeders as a natural food source for many fish. 
The next species is one I actually have a hard time telling apart from seed shrimp with my naked eye, and they are the copepods, or sometimes called cyclops. These guys live virtually anywhere on the globe where there's water. They're found in conditions ranging from fresh water to like hypersaline, you know, salt water. They've been found in underground caves, water and leaves, leaf litter on the ground, streams, rivers, lakes, even in the sediment layer in the open ocean. They usually eat diatoms and other phytoplankton and they're eaten by larger organisms like fish and filter feeders. Copepods may even be the most abundant single species of animal on earth. They're actually tiny crustaceans, so they're realistically cousins of crayfish and water fleas. Speaking of water fleas, next we have Daphnia, or sometimes commonly called water fleas. They are called this because of their swimming style that resembles the movement of fleas. Daphnia, like copepods, live in a variety of aquatic environments ranging from acidic swamps to freshwater lakes and ponds. They're actually a popular live food in fish keeping and are also often fed to tadpoles or small species of amphibians such as the African dwarf frog. Like seed shrimp, Daphnia and copepods are both good signs the water parameters are healthy for our baby shrimps. After Daphnia on my list, I have amphipods. This is sort of a catch-all term for tiny crustaceans, generally found feeding on the detritus at the bottom of our aquariums. They are easily identified as shrimp-like creatures, up to you know one centimeter in length, half moon in shape and gray in coloration. Freshwater amphipods are quite hardy and fully capable of reproducing to plague-like levels if conditions are right. A specific type of amphipod we see in our hobby is called the scud. Scuds go by the common name the side swimmer. This comes from the way these guys swim, obviously. Scuds live at the bottom of many types of habitats. You'll see them in spaces between the stones, roots, or tangles of vegetation. Large numbers can be found in habitats which have small fish populations because there's no natural predator. Some species are even adapted to live in saline waters, hot springs, or underground waters or caves. These are usually brought into your aquarium with new plants and can actually outcompete our shrimp for their food. I suggest removing these as soon as you see them unless you want a scud tank. Any treatment to kill these guys will kill the shrimp as well, so manual removal is needed before it's too late. It's the only way to prevent more. Next up there are isopods. These are commonly called pill bugs or fish lice. They are once again tiny crustaceans and are found virtually everywhere. Many isopods are harmless or actually beneficial to our tanks, similar to the other types of micro crustaceans. A large number are predatory, parasitic, or dangerous to other aquarium livestock, however. These guys have evolved into all sorts of shapes and species with a variety of lifestyles. Isopods are actually one of the few crustaceans to become successful on land as well as in the water. Many of you will recognize them as the common pill bug or sometimes called like a roly poly. Uh, nonetheless, most isopod diversity is within the aquatic realm. And as aquarists, we occasionally run into a bit of that diversity. But moving on from crustaceans, we have hydra. Hydras are sometimes accidentally introduced into freshwater aquariums when adding plants. A hydra has no brain, no circulatory system, no respiratory system, and not even any muscles. But it's still a danger to small fish and our shrimps. Hydra actually have little stingers that will paralyze their prey and allow the tentacles to move the food towards its mouth. They're actually a plant, if I recall correctly, and can easily be treated with a half dose of fenbendazole. They reproduce asexually, so even seeing one can quickly turn into a large issue and it needs to be dealt with. Something else we have to look out for, especially as shrimp keepers, are bug larvae. There are a variety of different types of insects that lay their eggs in water. I'm not going to list them all, but some very common ones we will find are mosquito, dragonfly, and damselfly. Mosquito larvae are actually safe to leave in your aquarium and will become food for any fish that you may have. If you're a shrimp keeper, I advise removing these as they'll just grow into adult mosquitoes and that's annoying. You'll have mosquitoes in your house. When it comes to dragonfly or damselfly larvae, remove them and destroy them. They are carnivorous. They'll hunt anything small enough in your tank and having these in there, it's certain death for a shrimp colony if not handled. On a less morbid note, there are rotifers. These are a microscopic organism and they're actually smaller than many single-celled organisms despite their relatively complex body structure. This type of microfauna plays an important role in the natural water purification process. The diet of rotifers consists of detritus as well as algae and other phytoplankton, which is up next. Rotifers are also prey to larger fauna like our shrimps. Being microscopic, you'll not see these in your tank, but I assure you they are there. 
So those are all the ones that most people are less familiar with. I'll round off with the two most commonly known microfauna. I'll start with phytoplankton. I'm just gonna call this stuff algae because it's easier. This category includes cyanobacteria, diatome algae, and you know things like green hair algae, among other types. Generally, we consider this unwanted in our aquariums, but honestly, having a bit of benign green algae in the tank can help crowd out other unwanted bacterial blooms and other types of algae blooms. It also provides an excellent grazing surface for our shrimps, as you probably know. Algae growth really depends on the availability of carbon dioxide, light, and nutrients. If you're experiencing unwanted algae growth, you play around with one of these three parameters to limit the growth. You know, more CO2, less light, or less nutrients, and you can fiddle around with the balance there. And finally, I've only included what I would consider pest types on this list. Uh, pest types of snails, that is. Your most common pest snails are gonna be the limpet, the bladder, pond snail, and some would say the ram's horn snail. Let me know if I forgot any pest type snail. I don't think, I, I think that's all of them. Some people hate these guys, some people love them. I don't mind snails, as you can tell from looking at any of my tanks, and I have more ram's horn than I can handle, and I love it. Snails are beneficial to most aquariums. Some will eat plants, but most of these guys are detrivores, and snail poop actually contains beneficial bacteria for our shrimp's digestive health, I believe. Whew. Well, that's that. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Leave a comment below if I missed any. I, I think I might have. I don't know. There's a lot. There is a lot of microfauna that can live in your aquarium. So like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, guys. And remember, keep your shrimp hand strong. Till next time. Bye-bye now. Recording audio right here. And let's do this. Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. Something, 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 something. Uh, I had it. I had it in my head. Okay. Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. How's it going, my Nano Tank lovers? Today I got something, 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 something. Oh no, it was there. Whoosh. Need to write it down. How's it going, my Nano Tank lovers? Oh my God, that light's distracting. That's that's good, right?